My experiences have given me plenty of insight into making strong images and whilst there's plenty of shooting advice out there today we're going to look at some classic tips and techniques as well as some less conventional techniques into making really strong images. The first thing I'm going to do actually is remove this strap because I don't want any movement from this strap vibrating around over the couple of seconds of exposure so that's the first thing I'm going to do before we start to do anything else. So now we're down to the, the basics, we just have the, the, the camera system, the back and a lens so there's no strap to be flapping around as I try, so slightly longer exposures here on this beach. The foreground is the crucial element of any landscape photograph really and for me I'm always looking for an S-shape in particular. If I can find a beautiful S-shape curve to lead through the foreground and out into the photograph then I know I'm onto something. So as these waves recede, I'm getting a beautiful S shape for a stream just under the surface of all of this water using a, a shutter speed of about a second to capture as much movement as possible. It curves around in a little stream which was here just a few minutes ago. I bring five accessories with me on nearly every shoot I do. I'm using a carbon fibre tripod a circular polarizer, a filter holder which takes various different neutral density filters and neutral density graduated filters, a small compact ball head and I've also got my cable release. Planning is essential to nearly every landscape photographic shoot that I do. Before I've even left home I've normally used an app called the Photographer's Ephemeris which allows me to work out exactly when and where the sun's going to rise and set on any given day of the year. So if I've got a specific location in mind and I need the sun to drop in say between two rocks as we're on the coast now I can work out exactly when that would happen and also cross-referencing that with online tide tables to work out exactly which sort of section of the beach is going to be exposed I can have my shot planned perfectly before I've even left the door. Quite often, especially with beginners, you feel like you've got to try and get everything you see into a photograph and here is a, a really good example of that. I think it's quite simple to look out behind me here and think that you've got to get everything in to make the photograph when quite often just picking out small sections of it and working with a longer lens will more often than not present you with the best photographs. Investing in the best quality camera gear I think from the beginning is, is really important. I'm, I quite often look back at the files from my first DSLR and think they're not up to anything, the, the, the files are too small and I wish I'd have had something a little bit, little bit more substantial in the first place. Um, so I think fitting yourself out with the best camera system and the best glass to go with that camera right from the beginning is, is really crucial to sort of future-proof your collection of images. It, it, if you ever want to come back to them at a later date to use them for any sort of professional reasons then you know you're going to be coming back to files that will stand the test of time in terms of image quality. I, um, I upgraded from 35mm into the phase one system, the medium format digital back system, uh, purely, well not purely because of the image quality which is outstanding at either 60 or 80 megapixels now, but 13 stops of dynamic range is, is incredible and that's made a huge difference to what I can do with each individual file. Um, I'm not a big fan of blending images generally so it's to be able to work on one file and get everything I can from that makes a huge difference to me and also 16-bit colour is incredible. Another of the main reasons I use this, this system now is the ability to take the digital back and put this onto a technical camera so that I can achieve images that I wouldn't necessarily be able to do just using the 645. So using a Linhoff M679 and this digital back I still get the incredibly high quality files and I also get much more control over perspective and depth of field using the movements of a technical camera. So here we've got this amazing sort of wildflower foreground, we've got this beautiful thrift and the grass is here Coupled with this amazing vista off into the distance, we've got some incredible, incredibly powerful waves rolling through in the foreground. And to somehow capture the power of the ocean by 
giving the image some movement in the water. Yet probably best to retain all the detail in these flowers as a pin sharp element to the photograph. So I think the best way to do this is to take one exposure using a, a four stop filter, which would capture the movement of these waves and the, the sort of the distant side of this photograph. And then probably to remove the four stop and increase the ISO slightly so I get one image of all of these wildflowers perfectly sharp so that I can then put the two together to give me the best of both worlds in the final photograph. When it comes to achieving the best quality files possible, there are three things you can do in camera that are gonna make a huge difference. The first is always shooting, especially when I'm on a tripod, with mirror lockup. It's particularly easy to do here on a phase one. It's just literally moving a lever and one touch of the button, the mirror's locked up before I press the cable release to actually fire the exposure, eliminating any camera shake and just in increasing image quality that way. I also really like to shoot in manual. I like to be in complete control over exposures and exposure time rather than sh photographing an AV. We've just been down on a beach where we've got white foam coming in and when that recedes you're left with a black beach and the, the difference in the metering there is huge. Actually being in control constantly just by locking everything and being in control of all the settings yourself makes a, another massive difference. Photographing with the optimum ISO for every individual system will actually make quite a large difference to the final image quality. It's not always necessarily the lowest ISO setting that's going to produce the cleanest files and give you the best result. So I think that's definitely worth taking some time to investigate before you, before you start using your camera really seriously in the field. One of the things I found myself doing quite a bit over the past certainly the past three or four years since I've been doing this professionally and I've had the opportunity to do so is to do whatever it takes to to get wherever I need to be to make the images I want to make. In Scandinavia I found myself sort of traveling from the Norwegian coast into Finland and down into Sweden just to find clear skies and to be able to photograph the northern lights and the same with sort of chasing storms across Tornado Alley. It's, you're covering such va vast landscapes um, just to, to get one tiny element that may only occur in one small region. Also, just photographing closer to home, pushing yourself to get away from the main, the main locations and the really well-trodden locations photographically and getting into the backcountry to create images that people don't see or people haven't seen. Anything that's new and unique will really help to elevate anybody that's striving to stand out as a landscape photographer.